Welcome to the 70th tutorial in the Cocos 2DJS version 3 series. In this part we're going to be looking at the UI button element. We'll be using the source code from the 7th tutorial. If you don't have it, don't worry, there'll be a link in the description. Cocos 2DJS provides us with a UI extension which contains loads of UI elements enabling us to create great menus, screens, hoods, etc. In this tutorial we will look at the UI button element. The UI button element provides a graphical element that can be clicked with can trigger events. Before we can actually code any UI elements, we first need to add the extensions module to our project. And to do that, that you open up your project.json. I want to open it up in Sublime Text. And all we need to do is here where it says modules, if we put a comma after Cocos 2D, and um, in quotation marks we just put extensions save. That is it. That's all you need to do to include it. It's really that simple. So that is great. Now that's that done. What we're going to do now is actually code our UI button. To do that, we're going to open up our app.js. And here, what we're going to do. Actually, you know what? I'm going to comment this out. Do var button equal new cc dot you know, sorry cc ui because it's the focus ui dot button otherwise if we didn't include the extension model we wouldn't be able to use this and now what we're going to do is do button dot load textures spell we're going to need to spell textures correctly and in here we're going to do res dot close normal dot p underscore png what we've already got we're going to do res dot close normal png but I'm going to change this to selected again. If you look in the resources for file, this is what we've already got. This is uh, already included. Now we've got to set the position. We're going to do button.x equals size.width divided by 2. So it's going to be centered in the x axis. Then we're going to do button.y equals size.width divided by 2. And that should be height. My bad. Again, you can just set the position like you've done here. You don't need to do it this way. This is just another way of doing it. Great thing about this, if you just need to affect the X or the Y axis or ball position, you can just do this one single line instead of having to do both points. So now what we're going to do is do button dot add touch event listener. This is how you pick up where it's being touched and then you perform, well, you put functionality within your game. Maybe you switch a scene, activate some audio, uh, spawn a player, whatever. This dot touch event. This again, this function isn't created yet. We're going to create this in a moment. We do this dot add child. Specify the button. And now what we're going to do is create the function down here. So we're going to put comma touch event colon function. And in here we're going to do sender then type. Uh, in here, we're going to do a switch case, which takes the type, and uh, there's a few types it could be. So first is case, or this can be in, in any order, case cc ui dot widget dot touch underscore began. This is triggered when the touch has began, so basically when you click it. And now we're going to do cc dot log. Log, and in here it's going to say touch down. Sound like something from some sort of military film, touch down. And what we're going to do is copy and paste this to save time. And now uh, we're going to copy and paste it again. And again. The next one we're going to detect is the touch moved. And in here we're going to say touch moved. In here is the next one going to be touch ended. Again, these are pretty self explanatory in terms of what they do. You can also think of this as touch has been lifted or touch up, however you want to think of it. And for this one, we're going to say touch cancelled. A lot of the time when it's touch cancelled you will just want to perform the same functionality as touch ended. An example where touch cancelled may 
happen is if you're on your application and something else takes control of your device. So I'm not saying a hacker, but um, like another application, maybe your phone rings, something like that. For example, where touch cancelled could be triggered. Um, now what we're going to do is save it. We're going to open up terminal. CD to our project directory. Run the cocos command. Okay, we click. Oh, need to open it first. Just refresh. Okay, so let's bump this down a little bit. That's fine. So if I click, it says touch down. And now if I move, it's triggering the triggering the touch move. Now if I let go, it says touch ended. So if we go back to our text editor, what you can do obviously if this is a, a button on a screen, let's say on your home, on, on your main menu, and this takes you to your game screen, on touch ended, uh, or even touch began, depending on how you want it, I prefer touch ended, again that's just personal preference, you can just switch scenes, like re replace, use the replace scene method to take you to your game screen. So yeah, that is how you use the UI button. Uh, it varies slightly from the menu item in it, but they are very similar as well. In the next tutorial, we will cover using the UI checkbox. If you have any questions, feel free to message us at support at sonarsystems.co.uk. The email will be in the description. You can comment on this video, just directly message us via YouTube. All the required links for source code will also be in the description. And as usual, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.